is this a western? All right, welcome everybody. Um, this week on Is This a Western, we had two independent viewers who both suggested The Mandalorian. Uh, it was Diane Dean and Yvonne Castillo. Uh, so thanks to them for that suggestion. And because I realized Star Wars is its own universe or galaxy, so to speak, um, that I needed backup. And I knew that my colleague Karima Richardson, who's the Autry's curator of archaeology and osteology, happens to be a Star Wars um, fanatic or a fan. Or <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and so super fan, I, <laughs> super fan. Um, so I needed to bring in reinforcements. So welcome, Karima, and thank you so much for helping out. You know, I'm always willing to talk Star Wars shop with anybody. <laughs> I'm very intrigued by the idea of Mandalorian being a Western. So thank you. All right. <laughs> Um, first, just before we start, could you just tell uh, the viewers a little bit about what you do at the Autry, just so they have a background? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, sure. Like you said, I'm the Autry's curator of archaeology and osteology, which in a nutshell means I'm in charge of a very large collection of archaeological material, dates back to 13,000 years ago in some of our Nevada collections. And then as early as some of our Spanish colonial material that was collected by Charles F. Lummis, who is the founder of the Southwest Museum of American Indian. Well, and um, do you, so you have, knowing so much about the past of uh, this planet, do you uh, see a connection between your love for a galaxy a long time ago <laughs> and a far, far away? <laughs> Oh, of course. The two just, you know, fused together. As a kid, I saw all of these sci-fi, such as Star Wars. My dad was a big Star Trek fan, as well as a big Western fan. But, you know, I think there's so many connections between just the exploration of the unknown, which is essentially what, you know, I think my heartstrings get tugged at when thinking about, you know, sci-fi and what's out there. It's the same as, you know, digging a pit in the desert what's under the ground <laughs> so of course for me yeah hand in hand <laughs> <laughs> oh cool do you see the connections because you saw a lot of westerns too what your dad was watching too do you see what uh, sort of themes between those westerns and uh the star wars movies that you liked a slight bit more <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah. You ask me, I'm like, let's leave sci-fi on one side and westerns on the other. But given that, you know, everything is all genres are intermixed and themes are intermixed. Um, I can't say for sure, but I'm pretty sure like every other western episode my dad was watching had a bounty hunter <laughs> or a rogue gunfighter <laughs> who wandered into a small town. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes picked up an injured person or child. So there are a lot of themes. I mean, the mere fact that Star Wars itself, the big, the bigger genre movie, starts off on a desert planet with a farm boy. <laughs> you know, Western themes. Yeah, the landscape. I think the one of the key ingredients of Westerns is definitely always like the landscape. And I think some of uh, Star Wars was filmed in Death Valley, and I think some of Mandalorian was filmed in Death Valley, too. You definitely yeah. get that feeling of uh, these harsh desert um, landscapes. Mm -hmm. um, and jumping, because you already referenced it, jumping to the Mandalorian specifically, right? you already mentioned, okay, there's this rogue gunfighter. Uh, there's a kind of helpless creature that you've seen also show up in some Westerns. I mean, I guess that aspect, I mean, if we are saying is Mandalorian a Western, you know, has that theme. I think we were talking kind of before about um, either a lawman, not necessarily a bounty hunter, usually spends the whole Western episode trying to heal someone who's been shot <laughs> at the beginning of the episode. <laughs> it's not necessarily a child per se, but there's this like injured 
person that now this person feels obligated to take care of for an entire episode and usually it takes them all off of their plan for the day. And that's the sense I get about, you know, every episode of Mandalorian. He's kind of like, okay, I have to take care of this alien child, <laughs> but uh, it's not my on my to-do list. That is not my plan. But And it takes him on this like huge adventure. Right. So, yeah, there, there's that parallel. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, yeah, I, w- I was noticing as I watched it uh, that the uh, really early there's a kind of weird horse breaking scene with a creature called a blur. It seemed like a classic Western trope. Oh, the other thing I had wanted to bring up was the idea of the saloon. I feel like in Star Wars, there's a lot of, <laughs> yeah. for sure in Mandalorian, but I think in this, the greater series, right, the, the saloons or cantina plays like a big role. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's such a big role. I think the very first episode, right, of Mandalorian started in the cantina, the A New Hope and Return of the Jedi, Jabba's palace and the bar and the cantina, kind of. And even in the really new ones, A Force Awakens, of Maz's whole cantina life. So definitely in terms of, like, taking a really classic saloon theme, from a Western and putting it to Star Wars, it's a, they've incorporated it in almost all of their movies. Mm-hmm. And it seems like also like the, I mean, to, it's a slightly more serious sort of side, but it seems like in the Star Wars world, it's like there's been this really destructive empire that's come in and it's brought people in from all these different planets and they're all living in the sort of same cities in the sort of, um, this world that's a little bit shattered by an empire. Or mm. I, was, I was wondering if there's a, mm. col- a connection to like mm-hmm. colonialism in the American West um, and those sort of oh, themes that yeah. we, we go into so much at the Autry. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I guess that's the, the bigger elephant in the room, right? I mean, the only reason why those um, stories work with like distant places traveling to get to someplace new is because there's some big event happening in a location that people feel like they need to get away from or run away from. And Empire definitely is no different than what we read in our history books about the colonialism, the oppression, the way that, you know, the West came and kept moving and it didn't matter (laughs) which communities they were trampling on as they, you know, went from one community to another. That definitely has a direct parallel to what was going on and what we consider like the 1800 West. I mean, I don't know. You're yeah. more the historian on like what <laughs> time <laughs> yeah, period I mean, the West. <laughs> no, it just, yeah, it just seemed like an interesting parallel where people are kind of, uh, there's a lot of people who are survivors of different things and like that they end up kind of thrown together and in the cantina or whatever. And, and it seems like mm-hmm. that comes up in a lot of Westerns too. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. All walks of life kind of ending up at the, the bar and the bartender knowing everybody. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's probably nothing in a Western that's quite as cute as Baby Yoda, I don't think. <laughs> I don't know. I know. Haven't, haven't seen that cuteness back there. Lots of children <laughs> and abandoned children, gun, gun robber children who leave their kids to fend for themselves. I don't know. I can't think of one. (laughs) (laughs) So if you had to vote uh, thumbs up or thumbs down, is Mandalorian a Western? What do you think? (laughs) There is probably an episode or two that follows the Western themes. (laughs) Is Mandalorian a Western? It's a (laughs) sci-fi. Okay. That's a thumbs down, I think. And and I think because I have to, it's my job to say that everything's a Western. I have to say thumbs <laughs> up. So that means we have a hung jury. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure. So I think we've talked about this before. My dad is a huge Westerns fan. And I think for fans who love to see all of those classic bounty hunter gunfighting scene, you know, whether it's bullets or like laser beams. He would say, by no, definitely a Western. 
I'm sure later he's going to be like, what? You didn't say that was a Western? <laughs> and I'm going to say, no, I don't think it's Western. It's a sci-fi. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. That's Somebody's got to hang on to the genre. Yeah, you got to. <laughs> Yeah, you got to stay strong for your own generation. A new hope. <laughs> <laughs> right? Classic new hope. No, I'm just kidding. Um, no, I, I, I do think for those who, you know, wrote in and asked you, I think there's definitely parallels and, you know, we could probably pick a Western movie that all have some aspect of Mandalorian and or Star Wars. So, you know, it's just the... It's a good theme. Rogue man runs <laughs> runs around town looking for trouble, <laughs> finds a child that they have to help. <laughs> yeah. Well, thanks thanks again for coming on and sharing your uh, separate expertise about <laughs> Star Wars because I still have a lot of catching up to do. There's a lot of there's a lot of spin-off movies and a lot of backstory that I still uh, haven't learned about Star Wars. So I needed some help. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, so much. you know there's gonna be a whole another season of Mandalorian and Obi Wan Kenobi's gonna get his own show. It's just never ending, Josh. <laughs> All right, I, it's time to dive in. <laughs> All right, thanks so much. <laughs> Talk to you later. Mm-hmm.